Hello, my siblings in Christ, and welcome to another episode of Bible Illustrated Hands. Uh, today's question comes from the main channel, from the user by the name of Benjamin. He asked, what happened with the Bolsheviks and Russian Orthodoxy? And uh, it is one of those parts of Christian history that a lot of people in the West aren't really familiar with, and we're, we'll try to set that record straight. Uh, for you see, Benjamin and everyone who's not familiar with it, uh, communism was, at least in the West, it's different in Latin America, was never, uh, never friend uh, of religion, especially Christianity. And uh, uh, once the communists uh, came to power uh, in, the, uh, in Russia, uh, there was a widespread campaign to completely eliminate religion from all aspects of both private and public life. Um, there were there were many stories uh, of this, uh, and uh, I will only co uh, cover the ones that I can remember instantly, because otherwise uh, it is uh, a bit difficult to remember them all. There are so many of them. Um, First of all, religion was never officially banned uh, in <coughs> apologize uh, in uh, Soviet Union, but uh, state atheism was proclaimed. So uh, the state was officially atheistic, and they sought to eliminate religion. How did they do that? Uh, well, first of all, uh, uh, at least uh, as regards to the uh, uh, as regards to the Eastern Orthodox bishops, uh, in just 1920s, around 20 bishops and 1,200 priests were ma martyred. Uh, I'm not really uh, sure about uh, uh, the monastics and the lay people, but there are those uh, cases as well. So, uh, they were shot, uh, they were shot, hanged. Uh, one of the bishops was... Uh, uh, crucified uh, on iconostasis. In the case you don't know what that is, uh, that is an, uh, uh, a wall, a screen that separates uh, altar area from the rest of the church in Orthodox churches and icons uh, are hanged upon it. So, uh, first there, were, there was that, there was martyrdom. Uh, second, uh, all of the churches and all of the uh, monasteries were immediately closed and expropriated. Um, uh, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, there was only one monastery that uh, was left functioning in the entire Soviet Union. Um, uh, oftentimes, these monasteries and churches were turned into these uh museums of atheism uh where they would uh, you know take different religious objects from different religions mostly eastern orthodoxy and expose them for public viewing for example they would take relics of saints and uh, uh remove them from their reliquaries from their protective vestments and every uh, everywhere simply to you know expose them to ridicule um they would put up icons that uh, were miraculous and Oh, you see, it's not an icon. But um, these museums, museums of atheism weren't only made to promote, uh, to you know, ridicule religion. They were also, so to speak, havens of science. One of their intended purposes was to promote science that will bring supposed golden age of happiness, joy, and other things that didn't happen with all that atheism. There's an echo. Uh, there's an echo of modern atheists sort of uh, there that, you know, uh, once religion is removed, everything will go perfectly. It won't, and Soviet Union was one of those perfect examples that it didn't. Um, uh, also, uh, uh, religious thought was mocked far and wide. Uh, for example, you had Bezbožnik, um, you can translate Bezbožnik as an atheist, uh, but uh, literal translation is much more, you know, strict. It means the godless, and it was uh, a publication where religion was religious, uh, <laughs> where religion was religiously mocked. Uh, for example, uh, you would have uh, 
uh, you would have like an icon of Christ uh, that the particular image mocked uh, uh, mocked Eucharist, uh, like an icon of Christ that was uh, devoured in a cannibalistic way uh, by uh, <clears throat> by you know old people, grannies, and so on, and it was p pretty horrid, clearly. Uh, um, and every uh, every front page of Bezbožnik was like that, you know, it mocked something like uh, it mocked. <coughs> Uh, it mocked um, uh, some aspect of religious life. Um, um, people in these circumstances uh, dealt with it in different ways. You know, they um, they organized uh, prayer groups. They uh, served liturgies uh, in secret. Uh, and uh, for example, uh, I know the story of a priest. Um, he was a priest in secret, and every day he would serve the liturgy in his apartment. And how would uh, how would he do that? Uh, in his apartment, he had a special plate and a special jug that looked like an ordinary plate and an ordinary jug. But they would use these only for the divine liturgy, you know, for the main uh, Eucharistic service of the Orthodox Church. Um, and... Um, his wife uh, had this speci special tablecloth, uh, which uh, they used as altar covering, and every day and every night, uh, his wife would sew, uh, sew um, uh, crosses on this uh, tablecloth, and once the service was over, she would remove these patches, and every day she would do this, you know, <clears throat> in order to give their life some uh, semblance of church. Um, uh, I've read uh, also this testimony about some, some bishops uh, who served the liturgy by playing cards, you know, to unlock, unlockers. They, it, it seemed like they were playing ordinary, you know, cards, but um, they were saying the prayers of the liturgy to one another. And in gulags, they would even serve the liturgy with water and tree bark because uh, they weren't allowed to have any bread and especially wine in order to serve an actual normal normal liturgy, but as we say in Serbian, uh, necessity changes all the law. <coughs> um, also, um, uh, in uh, uh, as regards, I apologize, I dropped the cover. Um, uh, I don't re uh, remember a lot of stories regarding the Catholics uh, in this um, uh, in this um, time, but I remember this one story that uh, uh, the bishop of Catholic bishop of one village was banished or something, and uh, 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 only an elderly priest remained, and uh, uh, his. Uh, his uh, par parishioners asked him, Father, what are we going to do? And he said, don't worry, I consecrated a lot of hosts. I hid them in this pot over here, and whenever one of you wants to take communion, take it from the pot. And they said, but Father, how are we going to confess? And he said, until you get a new priest, you simply come to my church and put on my stole and confess your sins under it. And uh, you know, you know, my brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, stories are, uh, like these is why Christianity can never die. You can outlaw it, you can persecute it, but Christianity is like daffodil, you know. Uh, you may destroy the daffodil, but its seeds will get everywhere and they will create new daffodils. So that is why the church in Russia today is so strong. Uh, it is because the prayers of all those martyrs uh, and uh, if there were no persecutions of Christians uh, in uh, ancient Judea, it wouldn't spread very far. And uh, especially with Russia, that land is so infused with Christianity that uh, if you try to outlaw it and destroy it, it's simply like embers under ash, and it will burst again at a moment's notice. By the prayers of all, by the prayers of all new martyrs of Russia, Lord save our souls. Amen.